uh, tremendous uh, director, cameraman. Um, I will say he's a full uh, one army man uh, when he's about behind uh, <laughs> filming. And so far we did one called Errores, directed by Carlos Diaz. Yeah, I, so it's a short film uh, that I made. actually made it just for him. Uh, he auditioned for me. I'm sorry, let me just back up a little bit. I'm Carlos Diaz. Um, I'm a friend of Carlos, and uh, I am from California. Don't throw anything at me, but... Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I, you know, we came, we came out here for the school district. I have children, uh, so there's really good schools. But uh, anywho, um, I, Carlos auditioned for me for a, a, another short that I, he, I, I didn't feel he was right for the part. Humble pie. But I saw that he was cool and good and coachable. So I, I wrote a script just for him. Uh, it's in Spanish. Um, and uh, it's just something that I, I thought would be really cool to make and to create. And it, I'll give you guys some really cool little fun facts. I know a lot, a lot of people tend to say, you know, I need this and I need that. And, and I, I need, you know, all this gear or I can't do this yet. Or, we, we did this in two days, uh, one day for day, another day for night. We borrowed a house the outside, um, we asked, I asked, you know, you asked friends to, you know, to collaborate and help and, you know, they're cool people and, and um, so it was, you know, it was done really quick. Um, the funny thing is that the way we rehearsed, I, I was never there, so because Carlos lives in Austin, the other actor lives in Houston, and the actress lives in San Antonio, so they all rehearsed on the phone, so, but it worked. You know, that's the only way. If they were committed, they were willing to uh, do it and then come together. And when we came together, you know, everything was, you know, pretty quick because they knew their lines and they were comfortable and they were able to uh, project that, you know. So I have one question. Yes, sir. When you know your lines and trying to do something quick and short and don't have a lot of money, does, does, the, sh does the shoot go faster? Um, I think when, I would say yes, but when they know their lines, it, it, it's more like um, they're not acting anymore. You know, they're... They're, they're the character now, so they can right. they flow, they can mess around with it, they can bring in a little bit of Carlos and then show the, the character and like the other gal, uh, Emilce, she became that character and the older fella, Ajenaro, not older, but older guy, right. but um, he became this other dude and he's a really, really nice guy, very soft spoken, very good. It's very good. but like on the film, he's intimidating and and mean and he'll kill you you know but <laughs> really really nice people yeah i mean and also one of, one of the things that i always love uh, work with carlos like anytime any day it's like i don't know if we pretty much have the always like the same eye um you know we always have the same um thinking about it you know um on set what do you what do you want well i want this one this okay and it's for me i don't know if i can read his his you know his um his vision and it goes so smooth and when he's casting, uh, like he said, Milce and, and Genaro, the really good actors, and kind of like we fit so good in, in the in, in the role that it makes it so so simple, boom boom. That said, I was so surprised. Like we did it, like he said, like in two days. It was and and on YouTube we had some review that um, he called me like, dude, we got some review on YouTube. That I'm like Who are these people, like um, I don't know from where, and they <laughs> love it. They're like cool, dude. Like let's make another one or something, or before and after, whatever. So you know, hopefully you guys enjoy it and. Um, yeah, it's all new to me, you know, so it's, it's kind of cool to get recognition like here or, in, or anybody else. So it's just really cool and I, I appreciate all the uh, the good feedback and even the bad feedback because, you know, you learn from that stuff too, you know. So. Excuse me, we have a, so we have a uh, question from YouTube and this is new. Did you still take some time out for blocking and did that trip up uh, the flow they already established for, uh, established with a when rehearsing? And this is from Brandon Torres. He says he knows you guys. Oh, Brandon Torres. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know him. The, the infamous Brandon. Yes. <laughs> Torres. Get my five bucks. Torres knows Carlos Diaz. <laughs> okay, Brandon. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go back to because of they knew their lines and they knew what was going on in the scene. The blocking and, and stuff was maybe just, okay, stand here. When you get to that rock, look at him. You know, it was like that. But, but because they knew the characters and they knew what they were going to do, I think it just kind of came out of them naturally, which is pretty cool. But no, there wasn't much time uh, to to block. You know, we were at a park, and I was told that we needed permission. 
<laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> we just do a quick gorilla yeah, style. Yeah, just show, show up, you know, and, and do it quick. You know, gorilla style, you know, just yeah. show up and do it. There's a the reason why we're laughing. <laughs> yeah, you get her. Yeah. Um, I have a question, and um, just for the cut, uh, when I asked the question, if you could like reflect it, so if I, um, how am I trying to say this? Okay, I'll just ask a question. For those of us who have not seen the movie, uh, what is that movie called? Errores. And can you um, explain to us the, the premise of, uh, you know, what's the, what's the plot of the movie? What is it about? Sure. Um, what, it's a short film, so in a sentence I can tell you the whole thing. But, there you go. Uh, it's Hitman for Hire, uh, and he realizes he's been doing so, so much work where his conscience kind of gets the best of him. And then it's like the, the last assignment that he went on was he took out somebody that he knew you know, afterward. Well, wait a minute. There, just, there was nothing wrong with this person and the guy, his boss. It's like, well, we all make mistakes. You know? And he kind of blows it out. But I, I guess that's where his, his, his the the calluses were coming off. Mm -hmm. He's, he was kind of you know being seen that you know more to to life than killing people, especially people that, that don't deserve. I guess didn't deserve it. So it's it, I, I don't want to make it sound like it's way deep because when you watch it, you know it's it's, right. it's like it's a short. It's just you know it's got. <laughs> and for those who doesn't know, sorry, like, uh, like errores in Spanish mean mistakes. You know, it's like some people are like errores, errores, and, but um, it's a character that I use. I guess I always get those kind of role, hitman, bad guy, whatever. And and when I saw this, uh, wrote a script, I'm like, wow, I really love it. Um, and at some point, bring bring a message. You know, this the world, unfortunately, we live in now, and you know, just make sure we don't make mistakes. You know, no. let's go for it. Um, but it's not that deep. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, now, as an actor um, working with this director and producer, um, how, did, how did it feel knowing that uh, someone that is familiar with this filmmaking process took the time to write or construct this project specifically for you, like Taylor Make It? How did that make you feel? Um, I was really, really flattered, and you know, like um, the first one that he, I went for, um, Humble Pie, I really love it. I like, darn, you know, I wanted to be that one, and then we keep in touch. And when he said, "Dude, I got a, uh, you know, a short for you," I'm like, cool, you know, um, I'm always o open to work in any character, and especially for a friend or whatever, you know, let's work it out. But then when I find out I was gonna be one of the main character in such a big role, and you're like, cool. <coughs> Um, I was obviously so content, and you know, I wanted to do the best job, especially for him, because um, this is something that you know we can find out later on to to move along and, and keep working together each other. And like um, every time you have something for me or for him, whatever it doesn't matter what kind of like uh, role I'm gonna get, I'm just gonna try to do my hundred percent. You know, after that, you know, like I mean, you have somebody like Carlos who calls you every day. I mean, you have no choice but to write something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, but it's, it's good. I uh, um, also want to say um, um, it's, it's another project different, but I'm so glad because Carlos, um, it was my cameraman. Uh, I wrote one about boxing, the part of my life. And I, I asked him, like, dude, right now, you know, this kind of like pro bono, you know, always money-wise, always an issue. And like, dude, I'm down. And like, I'm uh, hopefully looking forward so he can, you guys can see his work. You know, I say like after the, that one that I met with him and like, dude, you're the one. Yeah. And he's someone we look forward to work with Austin Dude. He's the man. Okay. Last question <laughs> for me anyway. Um, what will you be working on next and what will you be submitting to Austin Action Fest 3? Go. Uh, I have a upcoming project. It's called In the Hearts of Men. Uh, it's uh, it'll be a, a, a new thing. I've never I, I don't consider it a fan film, but I'm a fan of The Shadow, mm -hmm. and uh, this particular story it, it's going to be uh, it's a it's a it's a story about a mom and her her son's favorite comic book hero is The Shadow, and something happens to them, and she wants to do something about it. She's not getting the help. Or she feels that she's not getting the help that she deserves, so she wants to do. She wants to be that superhero that moms are. So she will take on 
this form of, of the shadow to to do what she must for her for her child. So hopefully for the next time I should that should be ready. Okay. Thank you, Brandon. I appreciate it. I have a question about uh, the sequence where you have the gun. You guys are in the park, right? Like a public area and I see cars pass by. Right. Like what was that like? How did you how did you get that by? Did you steal that shot or did you get the permit? What was the situation? Um it was something like, um, let's see, I was a little bit kind of worried because, you know, we were in the park and, and, you know, ladies, you know, walking their dog, the kids, I don't know, hopefully, let's do this real quick before they start <laughs> running away, you know, like, yeah. but, and then color I said, well, let's, let's go to it real quick. And it turned out pretty good. I guess the park wasn't that full that day. Uh, it was nerve wracking, yeah. man. It was, it really was nerve wracking because there were moms and the little kids and whatnot. But the cool thing is that I had my son and even though, uh, I, I said, hey, stand over there with the reflector, you know, that way, you know, that way. Put that. <laughs> even though we weren't using it, there he was, you know, and he's, he's, he's like nervous too, you know. <laughs> so, so are you saying that you use your family for, for humiliation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to happen yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> so that it was just uh, done, you know, click, click, okay, let's go, you know, just kind of taking the sweat off, you know. Oh, awesome. Anybody else have any questions? All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Play ourselves a little trailer. Aaron Wells, who was the original bad guy in Commando, uh, and that was the trailer that sold him on the project. But we flew him into Austin for one day of shooting, and he had a little uh, cameo scene at the end of it. Ben, where's the new trailer? You got You should have showed that. <laughs> showed the movie back five, what, the, what the hell? That's probably, that's probably the one. I actually totally forgot about that trailer. What do you mean? I just I hadn't seen it in years. Where is it? <laughs> that one? No, that one we just watched. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got Vernon Wells, so that yeah. was really cool. So we got like a yeah, big he was name a actor. Great guy to work with. Like really, could, he was like 71, I think. Yeah. He could still do 80s punching and kicking, and like uh, <laughs> fell right back. We, it was surreal putting him in the old costume that. That Bennett wore from Commando. <laughs> yes, yeah, so if you, if you loved, loved Commando, <laughs> if you guys loved Commando from the '80s like we did, um, we brought Bennett back to life. So yeah. that's, that's, that's pretty cool, you know. We, we did it a very cool way too. It's believable enough for the hokiness of what we did. So yeah. we brought him back at the very. We, we just paid for a, a one-day shoot with him. Yeah. Um, we basically paid him a thousand dollars to shoot for like four bucks. or five hours. Wow. And we um, shot for more than that, but it wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> he was, he we was, told him he four was cool. or five hours. He was cool, he was cool on the sixteen-hour day, but we didn't really we didn't need it, you know. Mm. Um, so we had him come in, and uh, we shot him at the basically one of our last shots for the movie, really. Yeah, it was one of our last shoots. And he's, it's it's the end of the movie. We bring him back to life, so it really worked out perfectly. And funny enough, is uh, there's a guy across the hall, a guy named William Instone. He's an independent filmmaker, and I met him. Um, I met him before I met you, right? I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. I met him. Yeah, so you're, I came to you're, Austin you're, you're, and you know, yeah. I came to Austin in '09, and I came to turn my hobby into hopefully something that could either earn me some money or you know make something really bigger than my just my home videos. And I bumped into Doctor. I call him Doctor Goth. <laughs> <laughs> That's the nickname I gave him because <laughs> he's always you know back when I <laughs> back when I met him. Uh, he used to wear eyeliner, <laughs> and he had black hair, and he had black clothes, and big, you know, lift he's, boots. He's, so he's still goth. <laughs> he's so. exactly the guy that he looks like. Yeah. <laughs> he likes all the things that you would imagine. Yeah, the yeah. Guy who looks like him? Yep. Would like, but. Yeah, he put he put Vernon on our radar because he yeah. was he was tagging a picture on Facebook with Vernon Wells in San Antonio at some comic convention, mm. and we were like, this guy's in the states. We thought he was in Australia. Mm -hmm. He live he lives in L.A. and and. Uh, he told he told told him about our project, which at the time we were kind of pushing as like a parody, parody sequel to, to Commando, which is basically what it is. Um, and uh, he was like, "Yeah, just have him Facebook message me." And I did I did that a little bit and didn't get any response back. And then when I had this trailer cut, I sent that to him, and he was like, "Yeah, sure, sounds great." And awesome. flew, flew him in and got it done and shot it. You know, and went went pretty pretty well. And then we hired Dr. Goth as our <laughs> as Vernon our, as our Wells assistant for the day. Because it was the one day we actually crewed up and actually had some crew on hand because we shot this film with like nobody. I mean it was like basically me or him behind the camera and maybe a little bit of a little bit of help here and there. But. Yeah, so that was really interesting to make have all that line up. That was really kind of a kind yeah. of a really a miracle. We had, 
I think I had at some point we, we we'd always have production meetings and uh, we just talk throw out some ideas because at first no chance it's going to be a web series. It, well, yeah, it was it was a three three part <clears throat> web series at first, but we always intended to make more of it to do a feature. And we we got the web series out and we raised uh, what we raised twenty grand on Indiegogo. Yeah, which <laughs> most of it was Jason's. A lot, a lot of it was our. At least half of that was our co-producer. We just poured his money into it, <laughs> which we're very uh, grateful of. Who's also the guy who plays younger Bennett or younger or Barrett, and uh, mm -hmm. also was the writer of the movie, and mm -hmm. probably uh, gets killed second to last, like. Uh, stunt, stunt guy who gets like we have many repeating stunt guys, uh, which is what Commando did too. So we kind of just went went with that. But um, yeah, so, so yeah, started as a web series. At some point, we weren't getting enough views, so we just scratched the web series part of it. Actually, just took it down and just said, let's just make a feature. Once we raised that money, and we basically made, I think our budget was probably around 30, 35 to forty grand total for, to get everything done. And uh, cuts the uh, final cuts about ninety five minutes long. It's on Amazon Prime right now and out in South Korea randomly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so some uh, South Koreans are enjoying this. Yeah, so, and there, there's a there's a Korean version of the poster that I randomly found one night on the internet that with the, the Korean text and it's it's fantastic. They did a kind of a recut of the uh, of the trailer. Um, but uh, yeah. I'm trying to remember if I saw, uh, I remember going to like a pre, like when you guys are like a work in progress. Movie. Yeah, was it at Austin uh, yeah. Film Society? Yeah, because I know, I know yeah. I ended up coming That was out probably the web guys. series. Did I do that before I came out to help you guys? Or was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we had like a, we had like, I cut together a 40, 40 minute web series portion and we all watched it there. And I believe maybe you came with Don Darrow or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because Don was all over the place. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, Don. Don's the most killed stuntman. Yeah, for sure. So if if you watch No Chance, it's the Don Darrow drinking game. Yeah. Every time you see Don Darrow die, you take a drink. First, you have to get to know who Don Darrow is. By the end of the movie, you're you're dead. You're in the hospital. You're having your stomach pumped because we killed Don nonstop. How many so, days did, did it take you to shoot it? No idea. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it was, it was three years. <laughs> yeah, it was, well, it was, it was about two years of production. Oh. But we took a we took a big break in between the web series portion and the feature portion because mm -hmm. we raised money and kind of we didn't even have the whole thing written yet. In fact, we never had the whole thing completed until like <laughs> it was done. Like the only the only reason we have a completed script is because we had to make one. For dis distribution, <laughs> but it was it was a fun way to do it. Really, I mean, oh, uh, sorry. Um, how easily or how hard for you guys to get in the prop guns? You know, really action. Most of the guns are real. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, so. He's, um, a, he's an avid gun maniac. Well, not, 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 not really. I mean, for the record, I haven't bought a gun since. Sure he's scared of the gun. But I, I, bought, I bought a few for the movie, and then the hero gun he he owns. Yeah. We just put a mock grenade launcher on it. Right. Yeah. To answer your question, let's be real, it's Texas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's all you got to say. What was the shot? Uh, a lot in Austin. He's got some land up in Copper's Cove, and we shot a lot of the action stuff out there. And then uh, my friend Dan... Uh, has a place in Georgetown where he, and he's he has like a tank in his yard and a bunch of military vehicles and he, he has about five acres so we were able to do uh, we had two full auto days where we rented we I know a guy who's a reenactor who owns an M60 machine gun full auto M16 M14 he had an MP5 we brought out and we did a full auto day and I think we paid him a thousand dollars a day including ammunition actually to come out and just shoot shoot and we did two days of full auto the rest was semi auto. Uh, auto guns that were uh, mostly guns I blank adapted, which is a real pain in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, another question. Um, is there a, a, like a scene where he eats a bad sandwich from the daughter? <laughs> a bad sandwich? We, we, yeah, we thought about doing that. But oh, the sandwich. It picks up, it picks up later. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. We, we tried, right. we, tr we, we repeated some of the scenes. There's the awkward uh, montage sequence where they're doing things. Uh, she in the in our movie she's supposed to be like a like a, a eighteen mm -hmm. uh, when she's younger and then she's older she it's like it, hap it picks up ten years later. Oh, okay. So it's actually most of the film takes place in the nineties. Is is there a, a difference between what you shot for the web versus? What 
Um, about 30 minutes of the web series is in there. Um, the beginning, the first 30 minutes of the film, minus the opening and the credit sequence, is all the web series. Oh, okay. Which for me is really painful to watch because we were kind of getting our production legs then. And honestly, if we had time and, and budget, we, I would have reshot a lot of it, but we just went with it. But um, it's, you know, I've heard people have told me, like, you can tell it's a comedy from that first part, so that's good. Because a lot of people are a bit confused sometimes. And yeah. it's not straight up like slapstick, hot shots parody. It's more like a homage film with some of that in there mm -hmm. and, some, and some, you know, subtle jokes and whatnot. Yeah. But yeah, the gun stuff, it's like, uh, you guys were talking about it earlier. In public settings, you know, the best thing that I, I the best thing you can do is you call non-emergency dispatch, and you just tell them you shoot a movie, and you're gonna have some prop guns. But the real guns, I just say prop. Um, you don't have, you have to be careful with pistols. Long arms, you don't have to be careful with because you, it's your, you know, you can carry them in public without a permit. Um, <laughs> we, Wait, what, what's, what's a long arm? Like rifle. a rifle. rifle. Like so, the scary ones, like an That's AR, an AR and AK, <laughs> it's okay to carry those in public without yeah. a permit. Yeah. Pistol, you have to have a permit. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we, we we were careful. Even on his land, we called we called the police department and told them because there's. Didn't house. they come out one night? They came out a couple nights. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, they, didn't like all of them come out one night? Like five yeah, or there, six. Yeah, you cop had to cars? go like shoo them away because yeah. they were at your gate, and they don't yeah. want to come past that gate. No. They when they get a gun call, they're like, "We'll stay here, <laughs> see what's going on," because they don't they don't want an incident. Yeah, I think we're doing going. like. Full auto or something. We had a, we had one full auto day out there, and then we had we had some late nights where it was like three in the morning, and we shot a few blanks, but not a whole lot. We would usually wrap up shooting blanks at ten, um, and the night shoots were interesting because you you basically we were it was very low lit. We had a couple lights, battery powered lights, and some care, and some uh, propane lamps, and the rest was lit by like uh, muzzle uh, the muzzle flashes and stuff like that. What's up, man? Why don't you sit down and enjoy the show? Sit down, yeah. There you go. Good man. <laughs> so yeah, a, a big thing about uh, No Chance that uh, we kind of pride ourselves on is the use of live action guns. Yeah. Um, he, you know, he's he's a he's, he's into that stuff. He he's a real really intricate prop master and costume designer, and he really sticks to detail. And a big gripe is, you know, a lot of TV shows, even even big budget yeah, movies, even, the even, guns even, look even Walking Dead now. It's all it's look mostly hokey, all fake. You know, some of it's real, but uh, some of it's just fake. They don't even bother to have a weapons master. They use airsoft. I can, I can already tell you, um, a lot of this after effects and it looks bad. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Really. See, really bad. Walking Dead season two for me, I started noticing that, and I was like, what's going on? I mean, on you here? can see you can see where to where it's like this. Yeah. You know, as far as the gun flash, it's like, huh? Yeah. You know, um, one thing I'll also tell you, Jim Butler is the person you want to talk to as far as Austin. Okay. Talk to Jim Butler as far as uh, for making sure police and legal oh, stuff yeah. is it. Yeah. The city of Austin is Jim Butler. Oh, yeah, we, 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 we don't play in Austin. I heard what you play with, but I'm about yeah. Austin. It's yeah. an Austin action film fest, but... Um, <laughs> But yeah, yeah, we didn't we didn't we, bother we, with a single permit for this movie. No, <laughs> nor nor production insurance because we didn't have the we didn't have the money. For it. <laughs> we get him. Um, for, for yeah. we could have used it, but actually yeah. not. We yeah. we actually managed to get through this entire shoot with no injuries until we, well, we had, there were two injuries. One uh, one of our actors got a rash from the fake blood we used, oh. and then the other one was the girl playing Jenny Mantrix got a burn from an M60 shell going in her boot. Ooh. And uh, he never he didn't notice that it was happening, and we were shooting with the red that day, uh, high speed. So we've got this great footage of her jumping around, which it's is slow motion. <laughs> it's slow motion. Now in her end credits, but uh, she's got a nice little scar scar to remember yeah, the project. I have, I have, I have a shoot where wow. where we yeah, we managed. Uh, we were running around with with uh, actual weapons. Yeah. Um, and the person that I'm thinking of had a, an arsenal basically in yeah. his two closets. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I made I I called. Uh, three women three times. One to say, look, whole bunch of people out the streets a week beforehand. Mm -hmm. Look, you know, we're not going to be out running. These are actual weapons, but they're not loaded. We have a we had a uh, armor there also to make sure that everything's everything's cool. Yeah. They have a call and they say that they haven't received a call. 
Yeah, they don't yeah. care. They don't. And I'm like, you're gonna have about six, seven different Negroes in the street <laughs> with, <laughs> with real guns. <laughs> wow. You can't hit play with fire. <laughs> I am not looking to get on CNN. <laughs> <laughs> I am not about to get CNN tonight, I've, I've, thank you. I've done some shoots, uh, like pre-9-11, yeah. uh, and I did some, I was doing a World War II movie, I was shooting in downtown Irving, and they have mm -hmm. this kind of canal area that looks like Europe. Right. And I was, we were shooting a blank set of K-98 German rifles. Mm -hmm. I didn't call anybody, I just did it, and just got away with it. And we were small enough to do it. I wouldn't do that today, though. Mm -hmm. It's too, yeah, it's too, uh, it's just too... No. So we didn't really have any gun scenes out in public. Mm -hmm. We shot on the Lamar Street pedestrian bridge, but there were no guns involved. It was, right. And no permits either, but we were small enough to just get away yeah. with it. You know? and well, we kept, we kept the guns at Dan's in my place, right? That was basically... <laughs> yeah, Dan's in your place, oh, and then really? in my house, and that's about it. Yeah. So yeah, we kind of kept the guns all on private property. Yeah, which is really the smart yeah. thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. And when you have five acres of land, you know, uh, even if you have less than that and you're out in the country, you can get away with it. What we did at Dan's is we told the neighbors and basically they posted on their neighborhood forum so they didn't freak out because we're having M60 automatic fire out there. But right. blanks tend to be louder too than real guns, so yeah. you got to watch out for that. We're doing some stuff with uh, like blowback pistols or whatever. But like guess, guess, like? guess blowback airsoft pistols are great, and we yeah. actually have one in the bar scene mm -hmm. where we actually, I think we could have gotten away with shooting a blank gun in there. <laughs> <laughs> but we were shooting there when they were open on like Easter. I think it was on Easter actually. It was a holiday, nice. yeah. Yeah, but we had I had an airsoft gun that ejected shells, uh, and we used that, and that was the only digital muzzle flash we put in there was those for those three shots. But it sold really well because you can see the the glint of the shell a little bit, and it was it was pretty perfect. And the city of Austin is not that difficult to use in like public land. The yeah. permit is not. I'm sure it's not. It's not, not I'm sure it's not bad process. here. No. The thing, the thing that I. Before thing that I ran into with looking into it was basically they want insurance, they want production insurance. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just it's really expensive, you know? Yeah, just a side note, if anybody does have production insurance, uh, contact yeah. AF at melissablade.com and we will plug you. Uh, we were using Fractured Atlas for a while, but something happened and we could no longer go through them because our insurance was super cheap. We had like $500 really? a year. Whenever I called yes. and asked about oh, any yeah. kind of gun stuff, like they were just like, it just went crazy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with, with that, it's just it's too... Uh, you know, assuming that's why you kind of lack seeing um, armors on sets anymore, because it, when airsoft is so readily available, looks great. Only I see little details where I'm like, that's an airsoft gun, because you can tell, you can see like the hop-up chamber, you know, the hop-up adjustment, like when the the ARs open, you know. Um, but to you know, to everyone else, it looks like a real gun. Mm -hmm. So the moral of the story is we use mostly real guns. <laughs> we, 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 we had airsoft guns. We had real guns. We have an airsoft version of the M60 because we needed to shoot some more with that not firing. So we had, but those, you know, it was only three hundred bucks. You know, it was like not a bad deal for a really good quality gun. So tell us about this, uh, this Kickstarter for twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's yeah, it's it was. I think we only raised about ten grand really because okay. Jason put in a lot of his money. But even that, like, what was what was the, the process for that? Like, did you did you guys have like, okay, we had to do X Y Z by this date, or was this kind of? Like I mean, basically, we 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 put up a trailer. What that was a, just a web series trailer. We had a little sit down with me and Jason talking about what we're what we're intending to do, making a feature film and whatnot. We had some you know small incentives, um, and it was Indiegogo actually, and uh, you know last day you know we got down to a couple hours of meeting our thing meeting our, our deadline or, or our, our funding goal um, and uh, that was it I mean it wasn't it, I think it was up for five weeks but I mean like I, I hated it like I hated <laughs> having to get on Facebook and promote like trying to get people to give me money and I wish there was a way to get off of that but there's really not when we're at this independent level you know it's like the best way that I, I could see and we got I think one one action site that pr promoted it for a second um, and now, now we're kind of distributed, but we went through distributor, uh, which I don't even know if they're around anymore. Yeah, uh, yeah. distributor. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we went through them to get it on Amazon Prime, which cost us about five hundred bucks, and then three hundred to encode the, uh, not the subtitles, but the closed captioning. Um, so seven hundred got us up there, and I have no idea what our cut of, you know, that is, and I'm not really worried about it. Because uh, I don't think we're going to see anything back on it. You got it up and out there. 
up and out there, which is basically yeah. where, where we got to on the project. Like I, I did a documentary, uh, um, two thousand shot in two thousand eleven, two thousand twelve. It sat finished for two years after having several distribution reps, one of which like ripped it off and sold it to Germany out of contract. Oh wow! And I couldn't, and I found out about it through a friend in Germany. He was like, I just saw your movie at the store, and uh, uh, she basically just, I, I think her, I think she made like three grand on it, and, which isn't big, but, but it's, still, it's something that should have been, it should have been coming to me. Yeah. But it, af after that incident, that sat for another year, and we got another distribution rep who got it distributed, and I'm just seeing my royalties as of like this December, and I have probably made two grand back on it, which I'm actually surprised at. But it's, it's, it's been out for three years, it's on Amazon Prime, it's on iTunes, it's on everything. Okay. And you can, you know, buy a DVD what's the, on what's the name of that uh, to, to Go Viking. So it's about Viking living history reenactors uh, and uh, martial artists, and it's here in Austin. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of it's shot, shot in uh, Europe. I take it most of you like independent film buffs or makers? Makers. Yeah, almost everybody here. <laughs> All right, well, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great town for it. You know, it's a great town. Right. right, so for us, I mean, behind sight, you know, <laughs> basically, uh, we, you know, we might have, you know, I, I'm big into cinematography and acting. Yeah, we, we, uh, we're both the cinematographers on it, so we basically, um, when I, when it, he wasn't on screen, he would be behind a camera, and we would kind of like get together and talk about lighting and uh, setting up stuff, so we dual cinematography, dual cinematography on it. But like, that was my passion, and so we wanted to make a movie, but we didn't really know how to make money after you yeah. make a movie. S still, we still don't know that. We still don't know. <laughs> Even when you shoot a movie for 40 grand, it's still like it's it's when you just can't if you don't get interest from a distributor, you're Whoa. just you know you're not gonna see anything. To me, that's to me that's the biggest hurdle for us right yeah. now is that it doesn't seem like many of us quite you know. So when I first got down here, I worked at Gold's Gym and I actually knew a guy who had a production. He was a trainer and he was he had a, he had a production company with another friend and they had been making independent films for a while. I think up in Wisconsin or someplace. And supposedly they made like eight or ten of them, and they're making like a hundred thousand dollars worth of profit off of each of these low budget like slasher horror films. And what he told me was somehow they had gotten in with a, a buyer who would buy the stuff from them. So basically they would make a crappy film, yeah. get a hundred thousand dollars, make another crappy film. They did that like eight times, but we never got those connections that you know the guy I knew did. So that seems to be how like you know, I'm basically saying is you almost want to have that figured out before you make your movie because you get like uh, yeah, us you get like us where we finish yeah. and we don't know what to do and we're sick of sitting on it because we yeah. made this baby and it's just sitting in the crib and so basically ended up finally i i somehow was like just tapping out on the internet finally i found this i found a stripper <laughs> i was like yeah i was like and i've done that like countless times and like, Matt's like what do we do I was like I'll look again so I'm just typing <laughs> so I find a stripper and I was like well this is it do it <laughs> do it now <laughs> come on <laughs> get it out there quit screwing around <laughs> What are you doing? What are you doing? Cutscene now! I cut for you! Who? Yeah. Who's your daddy? <laughs> He's dead! What is right? Oh, yeah. Bahala! <laughs> Go ahead. Um, you guys ever hear from, I don't know if he's still alive, but Mark Lester? <laughs> we met, we met him. The devil. Yeah. We, we, met we him. went and crashed a screening of Commando. At the Alamo when we only had the web series done. Yeah, was it done? It was done. Yeah. So we had three episodes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is he like was, he was uh, he was dressed up as Arnold and Jason was dressed up as Barrett. And uh, <laughs> he got a giggle. He, you, he it was pictures of us. Oh, there's pictures of us. He's together. happy. He gave, he gave me his card. He was really interested in it. That's I reached cool. out to him a couple times. And when we talked to Vernon Wells about him, he was like, "Why would you want to work with that asshole?" Like, <laughs> he, was like, he, he was like, "He's been run out of Hollywood at this point." But yeah. I looked at his production companies, and they just had a bunch of garbage, basically, which is oh. really disappointing for a guy who's basically made like I think four or five uh, Hollywood Decent stuff, like um, blockbusters. Yeah. yeah. You know? Man, we actually met him. Isn't yeah, that crazy? That's cool, man. Yeah. So it was just strange I, I secret. It was cool too. Strange synchronicity, strange synchronicity to you know meet meet the director of Commando yeah. to get Vernon Wells in the film. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was before Vernon too. Yeah, that was way before Vernon. Vernon wasn't on our radar at all until we saw 
that stuff that Dr. Goff. Well, had, no, remember, had, uh, remember, I, we, I was going to say is we had several production meetings. I was like, man, what if we got Vernon Wells at the very end of just, the movie? We just were like, we're, we're just doing, brainstorming, yeah. and we, we we just we had it out there. And then one day, Dr. Goth calls me. He's like, I met Vernon Wells, and I I I told him about your your project. He said he'd be down. I was like, are you serious? So we got him on the horn, and sure enough, he jumped yeah. on it. And I was like, wow. So. You know, I, I guess right now I'm kind of hopeful to pull like a Bruce Campbell situation. <laughs> you know, yeah. like like this goes some sort of weird, takes a minute, it's simmering for five or eight years, and maybe gets yeah. a little bit of a cult following because now it's on Prime and people can see it. So I'm just hoping that some sort of behind the scenes gears are happening yeah. for us that we can't see. But that's about as far as the manipulation that I can see me pulling yeah. on strings to make anything happen with the project. Like we we just got our first review. Oh. Uh, like la this week, yeah, it was it was all right. It was a decent. No, it's review. a good review. But, uh, it's yeah, right. it's good. Like, <laughs> it's need, a good review. More reviews. <laughs> and no review, no chance on Amazon. Yeah, yeah, right. Go, so, go, give, go, give us some stars. Yeah. And give us a kind word. Couple, and, couple uh, quick, quick things up. Uh, enjoy. One, his name is now officially forever going to be. Period. <laughs> 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 uh, two. The views expressed by the filmmakers do not necessarily represent those of us in the What the hell is so wrong already? It is, it is wrong. It is a, these are wrong and unedited. So things get said. Just for the record, for anybody at home watching. I eat, we say shit. So. Yeah. No, there you go. There you go. If, 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 you, if you talk to Dr. Goth, what happens when I got here, I. Um, I entered a, a film fest, like one of the first things I did, and it was supposed to be a, a, a 30 minute comedy, I think is what it was supposed to have been. So I came up with a character called Spartan Man, the absolute defender of Austin, Texas. And he needed, he needed a, a, a nemesis. And so I had came up with Dr. Goth, that was, that was the nemesis. And so there's, it's pretty funny, Spartan Man's mentally ill or something, and then uh, Dr. Goth's mentally ill as well. But um, I don't know where that's floating at. It might be on my YouTube somewhere if you look up Spartan Man. But um, but it's actually pretty funny because we actually kind of upset me is uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but Thor uh, like a year ago started doing these weird uh, YouTube videos yeah. where he's like, oh, I'm drinking, and he's like just like being goofy, like a goofy Thor. And I was like, man, that's like a lot like Spartan Man was. You know, that's how my character was. He was like this ridiculous Greek god, and and so. That's funny. I was like, man, he, did he watch my shit and steal yeah. it? The delusions of independent filmmakers. <laughs> right here. Okay, and <laughs> something I'm trying to bring, now, trying, now remembering to bring up at the panel. We are basically, it's almost a Biosphorus thing. We want to make sure that we include more filmmakers, but. We made it for people that don't have the giant distribution, just yeah. giant audiences to uh, get attached to. When you leave this place, my hope is that you talk to her, 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 these guys about future, project, future projects or new projects mm -hmm. to make sure we keep this going. Yeah. You know, we hope that, you know, if we can't do this, maybe we have do this for a year, you know, next year have something bigger maybe. We also like to keep it going on a maybe a quarterly basis or something to where we where it's perpetual. Yeah. So my thing is that sure this is cool, but make sure we reach out to some of the people. I mean, you know, you know, also we have a, a wide network of people we can yeah. contact with. So yeah, um, yeah we have sense, good, we have good people, good really great actors. Like yeah. We, we lucked out on the cast. We didn't have any casting calls. We just basically. New actors nice. and, the and the people who we cast were like Don Dar was responsible yeah. for a lot of it actually, <laughs> but uh, we just kind of got lucky and, and we, we take did, a drink. <laughs> if you see Don Dar, take a drink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he also plays uh, the, one of the Russians in there. Uh, does a really great great job in, in that actually. No, I mean I like what you're saying. Like we are a, a unique breed of people, yeah. and it is a. Uh, a unique family, but I'll, on a serious note, like I, I'm burned out. Like, sure. I've been I've been chasing this film dream since I was probably 17. I made my first music video, and I came here in like I said, 08, 09, and no chance basically, uh, you know, drove me into the ground. 
I'm at the point where you know, I've, I've done a lot of freelance stuff and buddy stuff, and you know, I just been you know driving around on my own dime. You know, we're all broke now, and you know, <laughs> an honest truth is, is you know, <laughs> I'm just I'm tapped. I'm tapped out. Like I like this was like my last. I'm 42 now. And it's creepy. Like I, I feel like I'm dying. Doctor Goth is <laughs> Doctor Goth is dying. Oh, you wait. You wait. <laughs> yeah, I, I keep hearing that. Yeah, I keep hearing that. <laughs> so it's like I'm just like I'm done. So I, I, I need something to click. You know, like I did my run. But yeah, I, I completely agree. And, and that's a few years will be your bones. Yeah, be bones. <laughs> Just be bones. Not bones <laughs> no, um, no. I'll, I'll put I'll, I'll put it like this. Uh, last month I turned forty-five. Um, this is after twenty-three years of doing IT. Oh, thank you, Carly Apple. It's chill away, Washington. Uh, uh, Kissing black ass. Um, <laughs> no, I don't need a serial number. Your hard drive. You know what? Kiss my ass. I've done. So my thing is this. I gave up because people didn't have my back. I didn't have theirs, so that's why I quit. One of the reasons why I quit the industry. And I've been as of September, it'll be me full time doing this. We're trying to do this for, for three years. The most noble thing I've done would be Ruby uh, for um, Rooster Teeth. But the thing I have, which a lot of people don't have is a damn good wife. Mm. I have someone that more than has my back. And that's, 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 that's powerful, man. Yeah. Gotta have support. This. Oh shit, she has my back. Yeah. She is my... She's my bitch. <laughs> She's my ride or die bitch. Let's be real. Tell her, hey, she, tell her every oh, hold day. On, hold on, hold on. Tell her every day she, how much. She's my ride or die bitch. But yeah. don't get this twisted though. I'm her ride or die bitch too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's gotta be. That is, I'm dead serious. Mm -hmm. So, because of that, is when I get to do what I do today, and I got a lot more to go. Yeah. Good. Miss yeah. Alicia. Yeah. But, but, yeah. Pick up the torch. I, 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 <laughs> but I, I say that I say that to say this. I say say, say this. Um, if you're if you're up to her, because I married a normal person, mm. because I did, I have less than a year than a year to make sure she sees some something tangible. Yeah. Mm. I'm going I'm going to be fitty in the five years. So we in fitty, you're not supposed to be doing non fitty stuff, right? That's right. So I'm gonna make more than fitty to prove that she don't take fitty cents out of my ass. <laughs> so I feel it up. Feel me. Yeah. So I actually. Well, Zadie has a question. Yeah. What do you think would take? What type of project would it take for you to get your passion back that you don't feel burned out? Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. I think I have to see some money. Yeah, I think I think mm. we, I have to see some money in it. We kind of made this film on such low budget that like we thought it would lead to a sequel mm -hmm. uh, getting funded, and it just we just haven't had any luck. Entered probably twenty film festivals, got into <laughs> one terrible one out in L.A. Uh, that we didn't we didn't even promote by doing. <laughs> Which one? Do you mind saying? Which I can't like, no. I can't remember. <laughs> okay. I'd have to I'd have to. Was no. Okay, thank you. I like them, so okay. No. <laughs> but I, I don't even think they showed it. I think they just accepted it. Wow. We were in the running oh, wow. for like a best comedy, didn't win that, but I don't even think they, they viewed it, you know, like. Oh, wow. So we really haven't, we just haven't had any exposure is the problem. And That's uh, what we hope Prime would but, do for well, us. Well, putting it out yeah. there in Prime is, yeah. is good, but it's been out three or four months now. It's got 20 reviews. That's it, you know. So That's it's just good. not, That's it's just not a. That's pretty good. I'm pretty yeah, happy about that. Most of those people we know. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> probably, hey, quiet. Probably, quiet. Probably, probably 15 of us are people we know. It's spilling the beans. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, That's true. Yeah. 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 Said, um, have you ever heard of the Action on Film Festival that they have um, in Vegas? Oh. Uh, now, AOF Del Weston yeah. runs it. That may be the one we got in. <laughs> no. It sounds like it. <laughs> well, I, I, read, I read some reviews on it, and it just it didn't. It, it they weren't great. Yeah. No. Yeah. You there? I don't know. I'm just curious. I'm just curious, but like, since we're in a room full of like action filmmakers and stuff, like, why why don't we like, and we're all broke and stuff? Why don't we just combine the brokenness? Well, yeah, it's def definitely movie? definitely collaboration options. Yeah, collab like like we have like all the tools here. We have a we have a medic. We have. 
uh, photographer. Like, honestly, like if you if you are all to collaborate and make like a comedy or something, because you guys are funny as hell. Yeah. <laughs> funny Thank you. I salute your, your youthfulness, <laughs> <laughs> your, your optimism. That was to your point. Yeah, How do you make the money when you get paid? So. I mean, I'm, I've, yeah, that's the hard part. I mean, uh, like I, I put in about basically because I, I was running, so I was, you know, I, my goal was to be a cinematographer and act in this. So I put investment wise about ten thousand dollars, you know, my own money into this. He sunk in what about fifteen? Yeah. And then, uh, well, our, our original deal was Jason, with Jason was basically, we, well, one, we paid everybody. Jason paid... Not ourselves. Well, we didn't pay ourselves. <laughs> Jason paid the actors when we were doing the web series, a decent yeah. day rate, and paid for craft services. I, I provided and bought all the costumes and props and uh, a few guns, to, you know, and ammunition. The blank, blank ammunition isn't super cheap. The, the um, two Russian guns we had that I purposely bought in a certain caliber mm -hmm. to be accurate were a dollar a blank. But that, I mean, like, other ones weren't so much, but they were a dollar blank for, to stay accurate. That, but that was like, you know, what I wanted. You know, I could have gotten them in a different caliber. It just wasn't, it didn't, the mags were different and everything. And, um, Jason put what, 20,000? 20, probably more. Maybe more, 25? Well, no, I'd probably put 20. I, I, think, mean, we're, we never, I think we're about a $45,000 budget, like, from, yeah, from, it's from, four, it's from this last bit of money to distribute. And Jason, yeah. Jason, Jason hired Jason, some guy he knew to Jason, like try Jason to distribute this. Jason paid for this. Vernon Wells because we were out of budget by then. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Jason. So Jason paid for a distribution rep. He got us a South Korea deal. He cost <laughs> he cost twenty five hundred dollars, and then uh, his that which was basically what we got for South Korea. We got three thousand dollars for South Korea, uh, so it basically broke even there. But I mean. He basically told us, go with South Korea. It was a $3,000 sale. That was pretty low. He was like, Japan's three times as big, and that could lead to Japan. It hasn't happened, though. And we, yeah. don't, have a, we don't have a rep anymore because we fired him. It's just terrible. <laughs> go ahead, Ben. You're, Ben's you know, in this movie, right? I, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> some, some shooting or some things yeah. and some following. It's a lot of fun. Um, one of the things I do want to say is that we do appreciate you guys being so... Uh, honest and authentic yeah. about like, yeah. the, the financing because many yeah. people in our positions haven't done a feature film and there's a couple people in here who shot a complete feature but most people haven't so they yeah. don't know mm. what you can or can't we, do for ten thousand or twenty thousand yeah and typically when you're dealing with independent films like this most of your money is going to be either crowdfunded or like one or two people who are equity involved yeah which yeah. is basically what you guys did so yeah. we really thank you guys for being willing to even talk yeah. sure mm -hmm. detail yeah. about it we got nothing to hide that's the whole point of this is you guys are you guys want to know the details how, how you know how did this machine get built you know and, and if you watch the film please do please go on prime and watch no chance it it really does play out like a bigger budget. It, it plays out like a bad Hollywood movie. Yeah. So but but a bad Hollywood so movie is a three million dollar on, budget. Yes. Yeah. 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 Y